And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, pointing out the obvious, I am the Almighty God, just in case you don't recognize me. After all, it has been thirteen years since you had little Ishmael, which hath really put the bricks on your social life, and an end to all those barbecue parties that we did used to have. Walk before me, and be thou perfect, and I shall give you a good excuse for getting out of the tent for a bit. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly, which in other words means that I am going to give you yet more kids, making your life more of a nightmare, and not clone you so that you can have more time to yourself when looking after the one that you already have, especially as I have specifically ensured that the one you have would be a bit of a wild one, and spend most of his time off the rails, raising havoc. And Abram fell on his face, having not seen the stray roller skater that did lay in his path, and God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Well, at least somewhere down the line anyway, now that you have worked out how to use your dick at a grand old age of fourscore and six. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I thinkest that the name that thou shouldest be known as, shouldest not be the same as thy given name, for thou shalt have a great many enemies, who shalt attempt to drop us thy parchment upon thee, for a thing that shalt be known as righteous laws. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Which Abram, no, rather, Abraham, had to agree was an excellent offer, being as it did come out of the blue. And all he had to do was add a few extra letters to his name. Though he did hope that the Lord was not being his usual literal self when he said that kings would come out of him as he could only think of two possible holes they could come out of, and he wasn't particularly keen of having any man put anything in either hole that he would later want to take out, no matter what his job description was, and he did wonder why, as the Lord has been making covenants with him for years, give him the same tatty bit of desert scrub again and again, he had not come up with this offer sooner, and the Lord did continue. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, in a deal that was changing by the minute, and including more and more people every time he did repeat it, to be a god unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, which sounded entirely reasonable, as long as all that was required of Abram was his seed, and there was nothing involved that would leave him with a lasting aftertaste, or make it painful to ride his donkey. After all, Abram was a rich and influential man, so it only followed that the Lord would make him such an offer, and it was so nice of him to offer to be his God too, seen as he already was. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And Abram did ask God if he wouldn't mind moving it along a bit and get to the point, as they had gone over this bit several times before, at least once in just about every one of the last several chapters. And in fact, the whole of chapter 13 was all about this. And the Lord did stop and ponder this for a moment and ask Abraham if he was sure. And Abraham did tell him that he was, at which the Lord did pause for a moment and did say, Well, okay, I better make it more interesting then. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And thou art going to fuck us love this next bit. And thou art to do it, remember, because thy doth get a new name, loads of land, and thee and thy descendants gettest I. 
thy bestest buddy, who doth turn us up at all thy barbecues, dost give us the kids, and didst get thee out of the shit with Pharaoh in Egypt, remember? I, the one and the only, the Lord himself, the Most High God, to be thy God. And Abraham did think for a moment that there was going to be a catch to this somehow, and did give the Lord an expectant look. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man-child among you shall be circumcised. And Abram did stand there for almost an eternity, open-mouthed before the Lord, before asking the Lord exactly what he meant by the word circumcised, in case the Lord had got his words muddled again, and the word that the Lord was looking for was the one that meant that he and every man-child among his house would be fellated by a harem of books and beauties, at least once a day, every day, and twice on the Sabbath. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and that shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And though Abraham still stood there in silence, a tear did come to Abraham's eyes, and he did wince exceedingly. And when he did speak, he did say unto the Lord, Thou art fuckers kidding, right? Surely thee, the Lord, who is all-powerful and merciful, and does love his creation, can just go back to a time before and make sure that the men of his chosen people have a shirt-sleeve for their little soldier that finishes at the wrist, without me having to make last-minute alterations with a blunt knife. You know, just useth that thing that thou dost not once mention in this whole damn book, the thing that will one day be known as hereditary genetics, that is responsible for my long nose and bad eyesight. And the Lord did tell Abraham that if he was to live in the desert and keep the land where he was a stranger as his home, then he should be properly attired, and should have a helmet that was properly adapted for sandy conditions. And Abraham did ask the Lord if he could have the Swiss Alps instead, and make cuckoo clocks and cheese with holes in it, because he was a stranger in that land too, and they didn't have quite as much sand that gets in so many hard-to-reach places, and the Lord said no. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generations. He that is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, or, in other words, your servants and slaves who are not in your employ out of their choice. You get nothing out of this deal apart from, well, a sore bell-end. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, you know, the slaves, must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And Abraham did point out that he may have a little difficulty selling this one to the guys, for rather obvious reasons, and if he tells them the whole story, they will most likely beat him with sticks and chase him out into the desert. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And when the Lord had finished, he did say unto the Lord, So, let us me get us to this straight. I get to own all of Canaan, as I already do, thank us to our little covenant that we did have four chapters back. And my descendants get us to keep it all, as we did speak about, once again, four chapters back. And we went into great detail about just two chapters back forever, and my descendants, who shall not as come out of any likely orifice within mine own body, shall as be kings one day, and I shall be the father of the nations that they shall rule. And there are no exceptions to this rule. Every one is included, every male over the age of eight days, regardless of whom they are, and how good they are at building altars, and offering burnt offerings unto their lord. Every bloke has to cut the end of their cork. And the Lord did say yes. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And Abraham did wonder what she was going to have to cut off to earn a name that was easier to pronounce. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And Abraham did ask the Lord if that wasn't what she had been wanting to do for years. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, 
and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? For he had been banging on that door, and kneading the dough in the bowl for decades, but the oven was still empty. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee, for my second wife, Hagar the horrible, will be mightily pissed if he has to cut the end of his cock, and he doesn't get anything out of it. I mean, he is hard enough to keep under control as it is, seen as you decided that he was going to be a bit of a wild and untamable sort. He's going to hit the bloody roof and have us my balls for dinner when I explain this one to him. God said, Sarah thy wife and thy half-sister shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and he shall not have web feet, a tail and hairy palms, or be cursest of all of God's creations, and be ginger. And I will establish my covenant with him, for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, chillest the fuck out, and calmest thyself down. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. For Ishmael doth look a little too brown to own anything more than the shop that is open all hours, that shall be located upon the land at which two roads meet. For the descendants of Isaac will get a shitty patch of rocky scrubland, useful for focused all apart from grazing sheep, goats, and cattle, or growing oranges. And Ishmael says, shall eventually find a substance that shall be called oil, that I have hidden in great abundance under their feet, which shall make the nations of his hairs the richest nations on earth, which shall, for centuries to come, cause the most powerful nations on earth to kiss their asses, and not complain too loudly about how they treat their women like livestock and cover them from head to toe in black cloth during the heat of the day, so that they doth look like ninjas. Though for some reason that shall never occur to me, they will still want us to own the shitty useless bit of scrubland that I doth give to you and Isaac. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, your so far unborn and quite admittedly, improbable son, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Trust me, for I art the Lord, and if there is one thing I doth do, it is deliver. For from now until eternity thou shalt just need to ask anyone who doth follow my word, if I do answer prayers and deliver on my promises. They will telleth thee that I doth do, especially the more improbable stuff. I art shit hot at the improbable stuff. I art really looking forward to making my face, or rather the face of my son, who is me, by the way. So in a roundabout way I get to knocketh up my own mother, a fact that will be seemingly overlooked by those who will pray with my name and kiss my arse, and hence, from then until eternity, appear on something that will one day be called toast, and give people hope that I might actually do something useful for once in a while like ending disease and suffering, or world hunger, or just making amputees arms and legs grow back. I will give them hope, and they will give me money, which admittedly is fuck all use to me, since I already doth own everything, but those that doth spread my word seem to like us having shit piles of it, so who am I to start laying the law down and telling people to giveth up all their wealth to the poor and needy, and then follow me? And he left off talking with him. And God went up from Abraham, leaving him in a stunned silence, with an extra two A's and an H in his name, to contemplate how he was going to explain the conversation he had just had in a way that sounded reasonable. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among them of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And one has to wonder exactly what story he came up with to explain to them the deal he had worked out with God, and what bits he had left out, considering how it was actually explained to him in order to get them to go through with it. And it makes you wonder if there must have been several slaves who went home that night to their tent expecting a substantial pay rise, shorter hours, and improved working conditions the following morning. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine, 
when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And it did hurt like a stoke bitch. And he did keep getting sand under the bandages, and his wives did call him a silly old bastard for agreeing to such a ridiculous notion, and did ask him what he was thinking. And Ishmael, his son, was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and afterwards he did go looking for his father, with the intention of ripping his bollocks off and baking them into a pie. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised, and Ishmael his son, and Ishmael did not see his father for some time, until long after the pain had subsided, and the swelling had gone down. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Which just goes to show that there will always be people who are quite willing to listen to some crazy old bastard who talks to God and claims to know what he is thinking, and will do whatever that silly old bastard tells them to do, even if it means that they will be left with a lot less than they had before, and nothing to show for it, other than a yellow t-shirt proclaiming the end of the world with yesterday's date on it, a horse cart badly in need of a respray to cover up an embarrassing mistake, empty pockets, and their bandaged cock in their hand. And that night the Lord did once again appear unto Abraham, and did tell him to fire up the altar, and throw some buffalo wings on it, for he did have the munches after he had been trying out the herb from a place that he had named Amsterdam, where the herb would be plentiful and available to all, and would be very good indeed, and hookers would sit in shop windows and wave at you as you did go by. However, he did vaguely remember making some kind of deal with Abraham, but he wasn't quite sure what it was, and he was curious as to why Abraham had changed his name to Abraham, and was walking funny, and talking with a squeaky voice. And Abraham, who was fourscore and nineteen years old and in great pain having just cut the end of his cock off, did explain the whole story, and would have surely have chased after the Lord and hit him very hard several times with his walking stick, had he been able to. But alas, the Lord did run off into the night before he could catch him, and from out of the darkness Abraham did hear the Lord, between fits of uncontrollable laughter, exclaim, Thou did actually go and do it? That doth make my fucketh day! Wait upon I doth tell this unto the angels. And the Lord did continue to laugh his ass off as he did go. (laughs) 